By 133 BCE, Rome's wars had grown from a regional power to a Mediterranean empire, stretching from Spain to the west of Asia Minor. With the growth of the empire came the growth of wealth and the growing middle class of Equites. There soon became issues with the manpower pool for the Romans, with many of the Roman small-scale farmers that would make up some of the lower ranks of the army moving to the city with the allure of cheap food. This led to senators and equites with their cheap labour of slaves to buy the land and, as it is noted by the rather devices Gracchi, slaves and their owners were not able or not willing to fight for the Republic. The land reforms that the brothers suggested therefore dubiously hoped to bring more citizen farmers and therefore increase the manpower that the Republic could call on. There were also debates on whether the manpower was just a ploy and the Gracchi really just hoped to break up the power of the senators. At the same time, many of the Latin and allied Italians that had been fighting alongside the Romans as Socci were grumbling and they, as they were still getting treated as second-class citizens, despite the Republic growing reliance on them and their soldiers. Yet in 112 BCE, a previous ally of Rome, Jugurtha in Numidia, declared war on the Republic and through bribery and exploitation of personal greed managed to be very successful against the Romans. When the commander of the legions, Metellus, was struggling to deliver the final blow to the Numidian king, a native of Arpinium, and a new man within Rome called Gaius Marius, used his contacts within the Senate and the Tribune to recall Metellus and win command of the war. The Senate also called together an additional levy to Marius, yet Marius, someone whose rules and constitutions did not mean much to him, soon raised his own levy, ignoring property classes. The Marian reforms, which we will get onto strictly as a military aspect in a moment, had set a dangerous precedent within Rome. The soldiers were raised by the general's own means, paid for by the booty claimed in war, and won by the general. Thus, instead of being a state army loyal to the Republic, the Republic became loyal to the general first and the state second. In the last century of the Republic, these legions and their commander caused three major civil wars and many other rebellions, such as that of Catiline and Sertorius. In military aspects, the new Marian legions were a natural and significant upgrade over the Polybian legions. Their manifolds were kept, yet were upsized to 480 men and now referred to as cohorts, a development that came from the wars with the Cimbrians and the Teutons, two German tribes that invaded Cisalpine Gaul in the hundreds. The legion was now organised into 10 cohorts, rather than 10 manipoles a line, yet kept the 60 centuries with 6 centuries to a cohort. The division of 3 lines was now no longer standard military practice for the Roman forces, yet it still appeared, mostly in the Gallic Wars of Caesar, with 4 cohorts in the front and 2 lines of 3 forming the triplex acuses. Caesar was yet to adopt a single line in Africa and Crassus adopted duplex acuses in Aquitania. There were also some issues with the term cohort. There is an appearance of the term cohort in the writings of Polybius. However, it only appears in one occasion where tactics of the men that a larger unit of the manipul would have been useful and wise. However, he does go to mention them when regarding the Socci. Yet, when comparing the phalanx to the Roman formations that defeated it, he sticks to the manipuls rather than the cohorts. Perhaps suggesting the odd use of a larger formation of soldiers was indeed used by commanders in certain circumstances. With the Marian legions, the term Hastati, Printer, Princopes and Triari were now obsolete and were only kept for ranks of centurions within the legion. There was an adoption of the single eagle of the legion and while there is large debate on the various other standards of the Marian legions, the eagle held special precedent. As mentioned, the old ranks and lines were also removed, therefore the roles of Velites as light skirmishers were also lost. To replace this and assist with the inadequacy of Roman cavalry, auxiliars were added to the legion, similar to the roles that the Socci had played in previous iterations of the legion. New auxilia, the new auxilia were local troops skilled in particular areas, and there are famous examples such as Gallic cavalry, Cretan archers and Balearic slingers. There was also more uniform equipment issued through the legions, with the peeler finally being used by all infantry, and soon there were new developments to the weapons one of which was under the command of Marius, who added a wooden pin that would snap the connection with the metal head and the shaft to prevent the enemy from throwing it back. Caesar made a similar improvement in Gaul, where the metal behind the head was untampered, so instead of snapping, it bent, meaning the enemy couldn't dislodge it from a shield and thus would have to throw away their protection. Another major change to the Marian legions was the weight and the packs that the individual soldier was to carry. The packs now included spade, an axe, a leather thong, sickle, three days of rations, as well as various other kit. 
Marius is also attested to creating a pack that allowed the soldier to march in armour while carrying the pack, and thus the name the Marian Mules was given to the new legions. Therefore, the role of the Marian legions had changed. They were no longer a citizen militia loyal to the state. The legion as a whole was now a professional force, and while conscription could still be used, many of the levies were volunteers, loyal to their general. It would be these loyal legions that led the wars that would end the Republic and instate the Empire.